The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like The Essential Calendar. The Essential Calendar makes beautiful, minimalist, poster-sized calendars that show an entire season at a glance so you can see and plan for the big picture. If you're looking ahead to 2024 and have big plans you want to see all in one place, visit theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. You'll save 10% off your purchase when you visit that link or when you use our code themomhour at checkout. Again, that's 10% off our favorite seasonal calendars at theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. Hi, I'm Megan. And I'm Sarah. We're two moms with eight kids between us from preschool to teen. This is the show where we help you feel better about the mom you are and share our own parenting tips and personal stories. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to the Mom Hour. Hey, everyone, and welcome to episode 118 of the Mom Hour. I'm Megan Francis here, as always, with Sarah Powers. What's up, Sarah? Hey, Megan. <laughs> it's a little early for you to be recording, right? So I know. We're doing this at I a think, different day I and think time. my intensity level might be a little more than yours, so that's okay. <laughs> I'm going to get you up where I'm at. Um, so the thing we're talking about, this is a really fun topic, um, and we're actually recording this on a holiday weekend, so we kind of wanted a fun, easy, light topic because our brains are mush. Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah. So today we're talking about our favorite fictional moms. I love this. I know. It's, well, this was your idea. It was Katie's idea. We have <laughs> oh, to give Katie's a shout idea. out. Mm-hmm. Katie, good idea. Great idea, Katie. Um, yeah. So fictional meaning everything from picture books all the way through TV and movies, yep. literature. You and I are big readers and we're always yep. readers growing up. So I have a bad feeling. I mean, I know you and I each have like a few, like a handful picked out, but I have a bad feeling that once we start talking, we're both going to um, just keep thinking of more and we're really going to have to. We have to rein contain ourselves. ourselves. In. Yeah, um, yeah. This is really <laughs> a lot of fun, and yeah. I have to say, I've been out of the habit of reading fiction for a while now, and even just looking at these lists is making me a little nostalgic and wanting to go back and read yes, some classic absolutely. fiction. So, um, also, cool. I am going to have Allegra, my nine-year-old, has been begging me to do another little segment on the podcast with me. I had her on a long time ago, um, and we just did a little bit at the end of the show. So we're going to do that again for this episode. So listen all the way to the end. And, and since we're talking all about books and book characters and our favorite moms from fiction, Allegra and I are going to riff on that a little bit. And she'll talk about what she's reading and some of her favorite characters lately. That so is so fun. That's going to be fun. To that a, lot. a budding podcaster. So listen all the way yeah. to the end for that. So we are welcoming our longtime sponsor, Prep Dish, back to the show today. And listeners, if you're looking to boost your protein intake, Prep Dish is making it so easy right now. When you sign up in January, you'll get access to a month's worth of the new Prep Dish Protein Boost meal plans. I love this, Sarah. Protein is so important for our health. It helps support mental clarity, sleep, energy, hormone balance, and more. And as busy moms, we're often not getting enough protein, especially at breakfast. With these meal plans from Prep Dish, you'll learn how to quickly prep four protein-rich dinners and one breakfast. Right. And like all prep dish meal plans, they make it so simple to shop once, prep for the week ahead of time and save time on busy weeknights by having your meals ready to heat and serve. And Megan, these meals sound so delicious and perfect for January. Listen to this slow cooker carnitas bowls, stuffed pepper soup, and then there's a Swiss chard mushroom and goat cheese frittata for breakfast. Okay, I am adding that stuffed pepper soup to my rotation ASAP. This is a limited time offer, so make sure to sign up before the end of January to get your free bonus meal plans. To learn more and sign up now, visit prepdish.com slash the mom hour. Again, that's prepdish.com slash the mom hour for a month's worth of the new prep dish protein boost meal plans. Check it out. Sarah, you know, when someone's trying to sell me something, I can be pretty skeptical. Maybe it's my rebel tendencies. But having some healthy doubts has definitely kept me from wasting money on every cool product the algorithm sends my way. You know what's not too good to be true, though? Our sponsor, Ritual, and their clinically backed Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin. Yeah, Megan, that's so true. We both love these vitamins because they're made with high quality and traceable key ingredients in clean bioavailable forms. And they're gentle on an empty stomach with a fresh minty essence in every bottle. So you don't have to worry about nausea if you're a bit relaxed about when you take them. I'm also a big fan of Ritual's sustainability standards. They use scientific tools to select lower carbon packaging, prioritize sustainably sourced ingredients, and set ambitious climate goals. No more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 20% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash the mom hour. 
Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 18 Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash the mom hour for 20% off. Okay. All right. Our favorite fictional moms. Um, While I was sitting here thinking about this, I had a general observation and I'm curious if you agree, Megan. So I feel like moms in really little kid picture books and literature and the sweet books that we read are really little ones. All the moms are like the most nurturing, ever present, like cuddly centers of their children's worlds and then i feel like all of a sudden everyone's an orphan or has terrible parents do you feel like that so okay where do all the mothers go (laughs) yes i have noticed this um it's not just you know in lit it's it's like the it's the it's the classic fantasy of the orphan child like the the kid who's doing it all on their own and i think i think there's just a a common i i remember actually daydreaming about being orphaned (laughs) when i was like 10 and I had this fantasy where I'd have to like live on, like I have to right. make it on my own, you know? Yeah. And that's when books like the Boxcar yes, Children boxcar really children. appealed to me. Yeah. Um, a various kinds of like dystopian middle school well, lit. All of the <laughs> so, Raw Doll. Like every single yes. Raw Doll character is either an orphan or has terrible parents or terrible yes. surrogate parents. And then of course and, we get into even, Harry Potter and yeah. Yeah. Even those like teen, those like tween and teen sitcoms yeah. that are on like the Disney Channel and stuff. If you really look most of them, the majority of them, the parents are absent <laughs> or stupid. So I just think it's a really common thing that appeals yeah. to kids. And it's funny as you say that, I'm thinking about the older kid lit that I picked and it was all ones where the moms were very present. And I remember actually Actually, even as a kid, even though part of me kind of wanted the parents to disappear so the kids could figure it out, yeah. part of me still really wanted that sort of in the background yeah. nurturing character. Like a, like, so, yeah. Where are all your mothers? But I yes. just think it's funny that when I was thinking about the picture books, that, you know, the character of mom is very much present. It's often, you know, a mother and baby like a good night book or you're putting, you know, the yeah. bedtime routine and mom is right there. And then all of a sudden she's gone. Yep. <laughs> I feel That's like there's, a, there's a thesis. There's like a someone's <laughs> dissertation in there yes, somewhere. Yes, Not mine. You could do that. <laughs> um, I also wanted to mention before we lose ourselves in this discussion of books um, that every single book we talk about, we will link up in the show notes. I would eventually love to have a section of our website that's like book lists because we talk about parenting books. We talk about books for kids. We talk about books right. we're reading. Um, and I know Amazon and Goodreads have ways to like make book lists and, you know, sort of embed them on our site. So I'm adding that to my list of things to look into but in lieu of that at the very least we will link to every single book we talked about talk about um, in the show notes for this episode 118 at the momhour.com so don't feel like you have to write anything down hopefully we'll trigger lots of nostalgic memories in you guys yes. listeners as we talk too so um Megan, do you feel like we're going to try to cover like picture books, chapter books? I know that's kind of what we talked yeah, about doing for this We episode. sort of talked about doing that, but I think we both have a list here. So why don't we just yeah. kind of go back and forth off okay. the list? You can, okay. I'll let you start. So I'm going to start with a couple of picture books and I won't take too long in either of them because the other thing that I did kind of realize about mothers and picture books, while they are very cuddly and nurturing and ever present, they're also sort of like... They're just sort of generic. Yeah. So one of the first one of the first ones that came to mind was the mom from Blueberries for oh, Sal okay. and the mother bear from Blueberries for Sal. Yes. But honestly, I don't think those besides the beautiful illustrations and the cool like twisted plot of the story yeah. where you know like Sal ends up with the wrong <laughs> kind of being <laughs> followed by the wrong yes. mother. Um, I don't think there's really anything particularly special <laughs> about well, the mom. I will say, having read it m- very recently, because it's one of my favorite, and we still read it um, in my family, she is very free range. It's very vintage in that way, you know, like yeah. like letting your child go pick blueberries. Like, leave me alone. I'm going to pick my own blueberries. <laughs> you right. wander yeah, yeah. off, wander <laughs> off on your side <laughs> exactly. of the hill, little little yes. Sal. <laughs> yes, but yeah, um, it was a very, that. it was definitely a very, you know, early uh, early 20th century way of parenting yes. that um, was, and I, th- I think I've always attracted to those yes, kinds of representations of motherhood and just how different things were and how different we felt, you know, yeah. mothers then felt like their roles were, yeah, um, in their kids' lives. And the, the you know the vintage um, illustrations are beautiful, oh. and I've just always had so much uh, nostalgia for that book. Yes. Um, another picture book that I threw in there was No David, the mm-hmm. No David picture book yes. series. There's no, I don't believe there's there are, there is dialogue in the book. There, you know, there's text, but it's yeah. all basically just David getting yelled at right. by various. And adult do you see people. the mom, or do you just see her hands? You I'm just thinking- see you see her hands and her legs. Okay. 
because it's very so much- you never see the mom but it's like basically and we had a whole bunch of these I, this was one of my favorite series to read to the kids when they were really little and you know the pictures are so interesting and entertaining yes. and David yes. is just he's got these weird like pumpkin like jack-o'-lantern eyes yes. and you know it's just a little it's like a little disturbing like right on the edge of disturbing but, but I think the little really ones fun. like that and it definitely sort of is sympathetic with a toddler's point of view don't you think yes. like I, yes. I think we only have one but I, I'm very familiar with that one yeah so. so it's either like the teacher or the mom generally speaking saying no David don't do that no right. no no and I and reading it you start to kind of hear yourself like yeah. the way you must sound yeah. to your um, spirited toddler mm-hmm. or preschooler and then there's always a, in every single book there's a moment of redemption it's like yeah. it was the last page and the mom says yes David I love you and gives a yeah. hug or the teacher says yes David yeah. you did a good job or whatever and that, there's something about that that I think is very sweet you know it's, it's very sweet it's realistic and yet the mom kind of realizes maybe she's been nagging all day right. and this little boy needs a little you know some attention or love or reassurance and and the book ends on this note where he gets it and I just I don't know something about that it's so simple and kind of silly but that speaks to me so well yeah. and actually it's such a good point that you don't need a lot of text to have the subtext of you know a parent-child relationship like that's a you know if you mention no David and people are familiar it's this immediately recognizable dynamic that we can all relate to and there's like no words so that's right (laughs) right I love (laughs) it it's amazing um okay well my first one is also a Robert McCloskey which who wrote blueberries for uh for Sal wrote and illustrated right he does all the illustrations for all of his yes I believe so yeah and they're amazing um so mine is the mother duck in make way for ducklings which is our copy of make way for ducklings is one of like it's a premium copy meaning it's hardback and it's big because you know Uh they'll shrink a lot of these books down and like our copy of blueberries for sal is actually paperbacks yeah yeah. ours is our blueberries for sal is a smaller paperback but our make way for ducklings is like the big hardback and the illustrations are so beautiful it's like art and yeah for for all the ways, all the things we just mentioned, the vintage illustrations. But I do love this mother duck because she's like kind of a balance between she's real paranoid in the beginning because they keep looking for a place to put the nest. And she's like, well, this won't do. This won't do. This won't do. And then she has her nine ducklings whose names are like Jack, Pack, Black, Mac, Crack. <laughs> yeah. Right? And the father duck is like, all right, well, I'm going to go down the river for a few days. And she's like, <laughs> she's like okay, I'll be fine. I know everything about raising children. I think that's an actual line from the book. She says, oh, I know everything about raising children. She just marches them all online. So I love her because she's on the one hand, she kind of worries about where to put the nest and making sure everything's okay. And then she just sort of takes charge and like marches them across the street. They do almost get hit by a bus, but with the help of a friendly police officer, she she sort of marches them through Boston. And um, so I love the illustrations. I love the story. Kids love that book. It's sort of like, it almost like scratches the adventure itch, even for really little kids, because there's a little bit of, you know, they've got to find their dad. They've got to make their way back. And, um, but it's just duckies. So I'm like a a sucker for every video of like ducklings in a line. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I, and I love watching ducklings in the water. Yes. You know, like, oh, like what they're with their mom and the mom is like kind of keeping an eye yes. on them and one might kind of wander away and then they kind of ducky around. Yes, and it is like a, it's <laughs> get nature's metaphor for how we all feel. So yes, absolutely. When, when my, well, this is a side note, but when my kids, when we're in a really busy parking lot or store or something I will still say to my kids okay do like ducklings and they'll just mm-hmm. get behind me and they'll find you like stay you know that was more oh, when they were so a little cute. smaller but it just makes sense like we gotta go like ducklings line up everybody yes um and so yeah and then I was just gonna add that all of the villi- vintage illustrations um you know which books have good vintage sort of home life illustrations is um the little golden books like the yes. original ones uh-huh. and some of them I think the like authors, I help mommy and those yes all those. of those and mm-hmm. some of them the authors and illustrators I don't know that they are of any renown because who, maybe that was just sometimes like sometimes they weren't even named people I think. yeah I like, mean maybe they, they had yeah. like a stable of they illustrators did. sometimes yeah. there weren't like um there were actually just pen names that right would be written under but there was actually multiple writers and author and illustrators so and I could just look for days at the home scenes and we've talked about this before but yeah I'm looking at one called nurse Nancy did you have that one don't so remember that's a really that really cute one, Nurse Nancy. And any of the, like, um, any illustrated by Eloise Wilkin, who is, did, like, I think make a name for herself. I think author and illustrator, maybe. But, okay. So that was my little vintage Very plug. Fun. Yeah. Well, should we move along to chapter books? Yeah. So I think that we're going to, I think maybe we're going to see a theme here. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, of course, you know, we, there no, no talk of uh, fiction and literature would be complete without talking about 
Ma Ingalls, Caroline Ingalls right. from the Little House series. And, you know, I think that series is one, What it's such a unique book series in that it really starts at about a kindergarten level, yes. or first grade level, and yes. takes you through to adult, like legit adult fiction. Yeah. You know, but very clean and chaste, but yeah. still. And then the parents are present the entire time and their mm-hmm. importance never never really wanes. I mean, Ma is every bit as uh, integral a character in these happy golden years yes, as she absolutely. is in the very first book in a different way. Obviously her that's role changes. That's so true. Is so, happy golden yeah. years. That's the one where she actually, where Laura gets married, right? Yes, that's what I remember Laura really married. well. And preparing that's the, one, the dresses. And, yeah. Yes. And it starts off with, you don't hear from Ma as much in the very beginning because that's when Laura's off teaching school. Right. Um, but she's still like a very strong yeah. main character. And I think what's so effective about that, I mean, besides the fact that this is of, of course, like having that vintage mother sort of nostalgia yeah. for something we never actually exist that we never experienced, <laughs> yeah. you know, that those, um, classic mom characters being resourceful and yeah. making a apple pie out of green tomatoes yeah. and stuff like that, you know, just <laughs> fighting you know, off the fire or whatever with your it was. Bare hands. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, there's also this idea, the other thing that I think to our conversation earlier about parents disappearing is yeah. Laura has a lot of adventure, but she yes. has it with the strong mother character. She doesn't need yes. her parents to be killed off <laughs> to explore the world and have a lot of freedom and independence. And yeah. I mean, by the time she's 16, she's like getting married. Yeah. So it's a very different world than we inhabit. And I think it allows her to have both that strong foundation that she comes from and then also like an adult life going on where she's figuring stuff out very young. So that right. I think that that was um, all those little freedoms that she was not allowed, but it was required right. to have. Yeah. Um, makes it really fascinating material. And I yeah. wonder, so I am not, I have not read as much like fan information about little house as you have, but I wonder when Laura Ingalls Wilder was writing, cause she was an older adult. I mean, she had to have had a lot of sort of empathy and like, having then gone through adulthood herself thinking back I've been like holy smokes like my mother (laughs) was on the prairie with small children and you know so I wonder if there's even more sort of if she's even more heroic having been written later on in Laura's life reflecting back it's kind of and the other the other thing that's interesting about that is that her daughter Rose helped her so much write the books and make them marketable really right. yeah um and so you have to also wonder how much rose looking at her mom yeah basically had sort of the same yes um pioneer life yeah, yeah. But, like how much that affected it so i don't know so i think it's fascinating is your so. ma ingles like inextricable from the tv character i can't to remember. me they are completely different okay to me, me too. the tv the tv show to me is almost like not even the same people <laughs> yeah but i think there are people where the tv show is almost the anchor in, yeah. like pop culturally and then the books i read the books i didn't watch actually a lot of the tv show i was t- a tiny bit too young to have it be something i watched like when it was on prime time so all I, the only time i remember watching it was when i would stay home sick from school and then i'd watch it like in syndication at like 11 in the morning so i wasn't right. I, I didn't grow up on it the way some people did and i read the books first and more than I did watch the TV series. But I know for yeah. a lot of people that what's the actress's name? Who plays um, I'm blanking. Shoot, I can't. Yeah. Think you guys, right you guys listening, you probably know. Um, yeah. But that sh- I watched it. Yeah. I watched it growing up, but I had already read the books yes. for years before yes. I even started. And to me, the, the books, the TV is, was almost like a silly, like add on. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. like the, the books were really the yeah. real thing to me. Yeah. So well, I actually remember being really annoyed that Charles didn't have a beard, that right. Michael Landon didn't have a beard. Yeah. And I was like, no, Pa very clearly yeah. has a beard. Yeah. 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 Totally. Well, actually that's a fun transition to my next one, because this is one where the movie influences how I envision the character. And that's, I yeah. think just good casting. And that is Molly Weasley from the Harry Potter series. Um, and a lot of our listeners on Facebook chimed in with this one. Um, she's kind of a hot mess of a mom, but like in the best possible way, like she has seven children, right? I think, um, they're all over the place. She's always trying to keep track of everybody. She's, <laughs> she's, they don't yeah. have a lot of money. Um, yes. but she's so lovably protected of her family and while she's sort of like cast in this domestic you know she runs this like overgrown house and this crazy house but she's when she needs to be she's kind of badass also um so I I was a fan I would say I'm not a super fan of the Harry Potter books like I have read them all once um but going through them my husband is a big fan and the kids have all been reading them now and then we've watched the movies so um there are fans of varying degrees in my house and um that the casting the cat the casting for all of Harry Potter I think is like 
some of the best casting in all of movies. Like I've never sat yeah, down really and watched a movie after reading a book and thought that's a, how did they know? It's like exactly how did they know what was in my character. mind? I know. And that in the later books, yeah. And in the later books, they have to take liberties with the story. And I kind of right. fell off the movies actually after the first couple, but I'll never forget watching the first movie and, and just looking at the casting and the settings and the design, like the prop design, everything and being like, Oh my gosh, it's like, the books are on a screen. So props to casting. But Molly Weasley, yeah. both from the books and the movies, is so charming and funny and relatable if you feel like yep. you've got a whole bunch of kids and you just want to know where they all are at all right, times. Right, exactly. Yeah, no, she was one of my favorites. And I have to be admit, I did read the first three or four of the Harry Potter series. I've watched maybe two of the movies. I just never really got into the franchise as much as people did. But she was always... She's like the one of the standouts for me. Yeah. People that's the, very memorable. The whole family is, you know. Yeah. So, I, Megan, maybe you should get one of the clocks that the Weasleys have on their wall that points <laughs> to where all the kids are at all times. Right. Wouldn't that be yeah. useful to you? <laughs> like, very useful. Take a maybe, I don't, maybe I don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Good point. Um, also, this is like runner up in the chapter book uh, category is I think Mrs. Quimby from the Ramona books oh, is just yeah. a solid... I think she's, she's very a, real. She's very real. And one of the things that's so brilliant about Beverly Cleary is the books are really written from the child's point of view. So the yes. mother is a little bit in the background, but I think there's a good amount of realistic tension. Like, you mm -hmm. know, Ramona wanting, just being frustrated that her mom's either not available or treats her sister better. There's some real, right. very real tension. But, but even given that the mom's not made out to be a bad mom. It's not like, right. it's not so dualistic. Um, and I think there's a lot of, I mean, those books coming out when they did, there's a lot of like cultural implications. She goes yeah. back to work full time, yep. you know, so I, don't, I, well, just, I was just going to say, like, it's really interesting if you start from the early uh, Ramona books, which I think were written like in the late sixties, maybe or early seventies. Yeah. Okay. And then are they, they I was follow they were earlier. Through. Yeah. So I don't, maybe, maybe they are a little earlier, but they follow through one of them. I think Ramona forever came out in the eighties, yeah. like the early eighties. Yeah. So things had really changed culturally yeah. and the books somehow managed to keep up with those changes without yep. feeling like dated yep. at all. Like, yeah. And, you know, there's the one where the dad loses his job. I think, so that's Ramona yep. and her father. Yep. And Ramona and her mother. Those ones I think were like mid seventies. Yeah, that sounds right. Yes. Yeah, um, and then by the time you get to Ramona Forever, it is different. Like if you go back and read them all now, like one after the other in yeah. a row, you can feel the difference. Like she's yeah. writing for a different audience yeah. of kids, but they're still. It's still Ramona. It's still the same parents. Yeah. They have different realities, but it still just makes sense and it just yeah. kind of holds together. So, yeah, that's a that's a great a great one. Um, yeah. Yeah. Are you ready to move on? To yeah, go next? for it. Okay. Well, it's funny. I actually had Trixie Belden's mom, and I know that that's really, really sort of vague because most people don't read Trixie Belden. So I'm just going to touch on this really but quick. Yeah, talk about it because every time you mention these books, I want to go look them up. So, okay. The Trixie Belden series, I think, started like in the 50s. Okay. Um, it was, it was kind of came, became famous-ish around the same time as like the Nancy Drew series or okay. Hardy Boys. So it's about kids who solve crimes or okay. solve mysteries. But it's kind of like if you took... To me, I never got into Nancy Drew. To me, she was like older and sophisticated. Yeah. She was like a, like a teenager. To, Trixie is like the younger, like awkward tomboy version. Okay. And her friends are like the <laughs> clean cut wholesome 4-H kids that's okay. the only way I can put it so you read these books and it's like so charming because they're just the nicest like sport they're sporty outdoorsy kids they can all you know ride horses and swim and shoot and all this stuff and they have this little club where they solve mysteries they try to help people and they solve mysteries and so you know what like the best friend is super rich and then um Trixie's family they always say that they're poor and it's kind of funny because they live in this huge farmhouse they're not right. poor but they're just <laughs> right. like middle class and the mom right. has to can and, and clean her own yeah. house and um, make dinner every night and all this stuff and there's just again it scratches that nostalgia itch and it's it, that sort of uh, I don't know a retro idea of what it was like to be a parent but she also seems really like she's got her own thing going on yeah like, she's not super into her kids lives they're off doing their own thing the kids come home and do chores like she leans on them to help yeah run this farm and you don't get the feeling that she has no life or that she's like the zombie you know right. suburban mom that right. might have been a character a caricature right. in a lot of other you know fiction from that time so i love her but i also want to really quickly mention since we're kind of moving into maybe slightly older yeah um, 
older kids or young adult fiction mm-hmm. is one of my very favorite books is A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. And oh, I haven't read I, that since I oh was like 13. Yes. And I love the mother character. And it's not, I mean, she is, uh, this is like 1914 Brooklyn or something like okay, that. Okay, yeah. Poor. And she really is... Um, just making do with with a, hardly any resources, a drunk husband mm-hmm. who works sometimes and doesn't work the rest of the time. And she's just very real, but loves her kids a lot, but isn't like the most affectionate, warm mom. She's just making them, she's making them survive basically yeah. and not getting a lot of credit for being a nurturing mom. And I just think that there's, that's like the, the dark side of yeah. vintage mom yes. fantasy. Um, but like, she's just making it work. She's making do however she can. And it's heroic, but she doesn't really get a lot of credit for right. it. And that's a theme definitely through like the first half of the book for sure. Okay. Um, so also uh, a favorite fictional mom who maybe isn't as touchy feely. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know. I would like, like just, to doesn't re- give you the warm fuzzies. I would like to way. reread. You should. Book. It's so good. Yeah. I think that I probably, I remember will. loving it. I can, ret- I can tell you exactly where I was when I read that book. It was like the summer before ninth grade maybe. And yeah, I read it on my own. I didn't read it for school or any other. And I like, but I don't remember that. I have terrible amnesia when it comes to that. I'm so immersed in a book and then I will yeah. forget the story. And this is definitely no when what. you get totally immersed in and it's long and it takes a long time to get yeah. through, but yeah, I reread it when every year or so and I never regret rereading it. So. Nice. Nice. <laughs> um, okay. I'll do one more and then we'll take a quick break, but um, mine, I'm kind of going to take a from books to movies with one <laughs> with one character and that is of course Marmy March from Little Women but specifically Susan Sarandon's portrayal in the 90s movie version um, so this is one where I feel like the movie character is almost like supersedes in my memory yeah. the book and I have read the book more than once and I have loved it but the character embodiment I love Susan Sarandon I feel like this was at maybe like a height of her career. Yes. I don't know. Yeah. Um, no, I think you're probably right. And that cast, so, you know, it's Claire Danes as Amy, yeah. uh, Winona Ryder, that whole crew. Um, and I love that movie version, but Susan Sarandon just is like, I don't know. I feel like Wait, she's... Wait, Claire Danes Amy? No, Claire Danes the... is Beth. I'm sorry. Kirsten oh, okay. Dunst. Yeah, Kirsten yes. Dunst. I, was, I said Beth. the wrong name picturing the right <laughs> character. So Kirsten Dunst is Amy. Claire right. Danes is Beth. Uh, I don't remember who who was Meg. It's I can picture her, but I just don't think she's as famous. Sorry, okay, Meg. That's, no, I think you're totally right, because I yeah. can't, in my head, I'm like, wait, who I don't, is that again? I don't think she is as famous as the other three. She was great. She was fantastic. Okay. Um, and then, of course, um, oh, old, what's his name? Um, Christian Trini Bale. Trini Alvarado. That's what that's what the uh, the old oh, okay. Googles just told me. So okay, and yeah. um, Christian Bale as Laurie. So it's a it's a star studded cast. Gosh, um, I forgot Christian Bale was in that. Oh, yeah, man. As, as that Laurie. movie came out. That movie came out when I was in high, like yeah. a senior in high school. Yep. So I had already read the books. Probably the book like well, there's also Little Men, but I had read that book like yeah a million times already. So the movie was cool, and I really liked it. But it, in my mind, it's the other. It's see, like, and I think I had probably only read the book maybe once at that point and um, it was just getting into movies in that way and I just remember loving that movie it's also you know how you've talked about how you associate the Harry Potter movies with Christmas even though they're yes. not always Christmassy yeah that is another that version of Little Women because there's a major Christmas scene I mean Little Women is not all about Christmas but I associate that one with Christmas like the Christmas scenes and the snow and it's so great but Susan Sarandon's portrayal is like I could just watch clips of that movie it's just nurturing right. and comforting and really wise and like the scene where uh, Amy throws the manuscript in the fire and like Joe freaks out is just yep. really, really memorable. She's like, she's just loving. She's just a mm-hmm. loving mom. And I just, I have more, I have a more vivid picture of it through the movie than I do of the book, even though I have read yeah, the Yeah, she's loving and, and firm. Yeah. Um, but kind and always like encouraging the girls to be kind. And, yes. and that's just, that, yes, that definitely also scratches an itch for me. And I feel so. like even though she's, she, de- she definitely subscribes to like the etiquette and the morals and the customs of the day. I almost feel like she like has this little bit of a like, progressive streak where she just wants them to be good people do you know what I mean like I don't know that's me that's maybe me overlaying my own no I I, (laughs) no I've read the book quite a few times yeah I think I agree with that so all right yeah well Megan I've been wearing Vionic shoes for over three years now but this month my trusted shoe brand and I entered a new phase of our relationship international travel well Sarah that is a serious commitment (laughs) right You can't just pack any shoe for a trip abroad. It's got to be stylish enough for those major cosmopolitan cities. 
It's got to be sturdy enough for trains, planes, buses, and city streets. And obviously, it's got to be comfortable enough to support your feet over many, many miles of walking. Well, no surprise, my Vionics were up to the task. I had two pair with me, a pair of casual sneakers in a cool gray color, and then a weatherproof suede ankle boot that I swear still looks brand new after 10 days on soggy sidewalks. Megan, the only time my feet hurt the entire trip was New Year's Eve when I made the mistake of wearing a pair of booties not from Vionic. So I'll just leave that data right here for you. Okay, well, that's pretty conclusive, Sarah. Vionic has the best curated styles to get you ready for whatever 2024 has in store, whether it's jet setting like Sarah or keeping up with busy mom life on this side of the pond. They even offer a 30 day guarantee, wear them, love them or return them for a full refund within 30 days. And we've got a great deal for you. Use code the mom hour 15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at Vionicshoes.com When you log into your account, that's a one-time use only. Bionic shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. Sarah, when my kids were little, I was always pretty torn on whether to give them a daily multivitamin. I knew that modern kids' diets have some pretty big nutritional gaps, but I also knew that most children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise. They're filled with sugar, they have all kinds of chemicals and preservatives in them, and I was like, why would I give these to my kids? Luckily, two dads recognized the problem and came up with a solution. Haya, the pediatrician-approved, super-powered, chewable vitamin. Haya fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full-body nourishment our kids need with a yummy taste they love. Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. Your first shipment comes with a cute bottle that has fun stickers your kids can use to decorate it too. My kids always loved that. And we've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, go to HayaHealth.com slash MomHour. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash mom hour and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. All right. OK, so let's get back into this. Megan, did you see I posted this to Facebook and Instagram yes. this question? Oh, my gosh. We were OK. So we were just <laughs> you and I have talked about the fact that we've never watched the Gilmore Girls. This is not the first time we've talked about this, by the way. I don't know. I feel like we might be outing ourselves. We've talked about it ourselves, but I don't know if we've ever told our listeners that. Oh, no, no, no. We've never told our listeners. I have mentioned it, though. I don't remember when, but we definitely had this conversation a while ago. But that was one of the ones that kept coming up that people said was one of their their favorite um, fictional moms. Yes, is Lorelai Gilmore from the Gilmore Girls. And now we have to tell you guys that neither Megan nor I has ever watched a single episode. Not a single episode. (laughs) I do. I have seen ads for it. So I know who's in it. I know what they look like. I know they look like. And I have some vague idea of what it's about, sort of. They talk fast. You know, it was, it came out at a time, that show really got popular at a time that I was watching zero TV and especially not any network TV whatsoever. So... Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, guys. We can't really can't really chime in on that conversation too but much. But literally 90% of the people who commented <laughs> on Facebook and Instagram, and we got a lot of comments about your favorite fictional moms. It was pretty much all Lorelai Gilmore. So we're going to throw her out there. She is a favorite fictional mom. She's just not one of ours because we've never seen it. Don't hate us. Don't hate us. And don't, we probably aren't going to start watching no, it No, probably not. I mean, no. unless you like give us a week away from home and all expenses oh, and it, paid, then the I'll only watch requirement it. is we have to watch it? Yeah, mm-hmm. I'll watch it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will <laughs> link up those threads in the show notes because it's fun to see what other moms um because there were some other really great suggestions too some that were similar to ours and then some that um came out i know are you a friday night lights no uh, okay because that's no. a show i would like to watch because i always hear good things and um i know several listeners love i saw the movie but that. i never saw the show right. i never got into parenthood i never got yeah, into modern family i just missed that whole thing you so, know what we realized is sorry. all of the tv shows that you and i like have terrible people in them that's why. that's, that's true <laughs> <laughs> that's the way we tend to go with it we, you know we're, we're such good people in our normal lives we just have to escape a little bit yes. with these terrible people right Am we'll I take right? it i'll take that yeah. spin okay on it. Okay, so why don't you give us a TV mom? 
Okay, well, this one, I don't know. I don't think she's going to be controversial. The show no. it's probably not that is probably out of favor, but Claire Huxtable from yeah. The Cosby Show. Um, Mr. Cosby's uh, rotten actions aside, yeah. she was so cool. What I loved about Claire Huxtable is, A, she had five kids. At the time, yes. I didn't know that I was going to one day have five kids, but came from a big family, and yeah. I liked that she was professional, yeah. but very involved in her kids' lives. She was super no-nonsense, yeah. but still, like warm and kind but yeah. also would not hesitate to you know put a kid in his place yeah and very realistic and she had high expectations yeah but was but the kids were allowed to be who they were they weren't all just like little you know doctors and lawyers running yeah. around I just yeah. loved her she's just, it's just she, like everything I wanted to be like in an 80s mom yes so. and she, Felicia Rashad is such a I think her humor I think she was a, like comedically hilarious in that show yes, and I you know was. I that was one of the first sitcoms that I really watched as a kid um but even like thinking about reruns and clips I mean she's funny really really yeah. funny um and I love a good funny actress so that's a great yeah, one and she really, really is. several of our listeners mentioned her as well um okay so I've got one from a movie and it's one of my favorite movies really in my top 10 all-time favorite movies and that is Almost Famous which I love the entire mm, movie but Frances too. McDormand plays Elaine, I had to look up the character's name, who is the mom of the kid who runs off to follow the yeah. rock band. And um, I don't know. I feel like I could rewatch this movie tomorrow and maybe I'd even have different opinions of this yeah. mom character. I just feel like she's such a she doesn't have a lot of screen time in the movie and she steals every scene. She's super intense. She's like completely lost control of her family. And so she's a little bit at the end of her rope, but she is appealing in some way. So she I don't really know. is. First of all, Frances McDormand is amazing in everything. She's, she's amazing. In. So she, it's yes. really hard not to love any character. And even I though agree. the characters are comp are conflicting and yeah. complex complicated often um i still always love them but did i just rewatched almost famous was it with you because i no, just rewatched i haven't rewatched i ago. used to rewatch it a lot like i i used to yeah. watch it a lot and i haven't watched it in oh, several years probably there's a part where she's on the phone mm -hmm. with the boy and he's in the hallway and yes yeah it doesn't she tell him she doesn't say make good choices but she says like remember who you are yeah. or something like that yeah. and i was like whoa it was kind of i remember being like really inspired by that yeah. conversation because here she is freaking out yeah because she has no idea what's going on with her kid. She knows he's fallen in with, you yeah. know, a bad element. Yeah. And she's just trying to bring it back to his moral compass, yeah. really, which is what that which is, And that's all about. she can do because he's so right. far away. And she's right. just... Com and then when she gets all maternal with... Um, oh, man. With the rock star who's yeah, played the rock by... Star. Yes. Yeah, the rock star, yes. Yeah. And I love that, that she just, she's sort of like can't help herself. Like she's a mom right. to the core. Um, right. So yeah, great performance. I'd rewatch it. I feel like I didn't have as much to say because it has been a while. I just know that I love her. Yeah, so. I love it. Well, right. I have another, I have another movie mom okay. that I love that's on this list. Um, the mom from A Christmas Story. Okay, you're going to have to I set this up her. for me because that You've movie You've never seen this movie? Well, I have, but I feel like it's always on in the background and I haven't yeah. done like a, like a sit down and watch it since maybe I was a kid. This is so where again, my this pop is like, cultural This is like, vintage ignorance. mom. Yeah. You know, this is kind of my theme here, but she's, um, it's a, like depression era or, or, or for, I think it's the forties. And so she's like a, so, you know, she's like a housewife right. and has these two little boys mm -hmm. and she's, it's very real. It shows like the frustrations of her trying to like get her kids into these immense snowsuits. And, you know, in those days they probably didn't even make them easy to get on. <laughs> right. Like, right. You know, or like trying to get her picky eater kid to eat and she's goofy and silly and sweet. And I just, I love her. She's like one of my favorite, but very, but, but real, just like really yeah. her hair is crazy. Her hair is always like going off in a million directions. <laughs> and I can't remember the name of the actress. Um, Cause I, I feel like, it's one of those where that's such an iconic role for her. Yeah. I know she's been in other stuff, but all but I can ever whatever. think of is... And I can't even that. picture her. That's how. That's that's just one of those movies where it seems like every time I see it, it's in clips and all yeah. chopped up. And you I, should really sit down and yeah, just I watch it beginning to end, not with commercials, and just watch the whole movie. Yeah. And your kids are all at a good age that, well, Violet won't care, but right. your other kids will probably yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. 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 Um, speaking of that, a, a listener um, mentioned the mom from Home Alone, which is another Christmas oh, movie. And yeah. that is a great she, that is a great performance by her. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Um, OK, so I have a really silly one. And that is Mrs. Pteranodon from PBS's Dinosaur Train for all okay. you PBS. <laughs> um, there's a lot of terrible, annoying mothers in like really young children's programming, um, just because a lot of that programming is in itself annoying. I love Mrs. Pteranodon. So first of all, she adopts the T-Rex, who's like 
like hatches in her nest and she doesn't even know where he came from. And she's like, sure, you could be in our family. So that's cool from the beginning. But I feel like every episode, she's like a little free range. Like they're always kind of off doing their own thing, but she still has control and she takes them on really cool, like educational adventures. And her kids are like all very different and like, sometimes get into a little trouble but she's she's just got her head on straight mrs tranodon so if i had oh, to pick it's been a, a long i don't think i think dinosaur train was kind of getting big just as my kids were out yeah yeah it, so. you weren't yeah i, yeah, I, I wasn't thought that one probably missed you but yep. um it's a it's a cute show and i just even though i don't sit down and watch those shows with my kids when they were watching them i even remember just being in the other room be like i like that mom yeah so yep. does this lead us to a cartoon a mom that mom. you're not so okay so we're gonna do one <laughs> one or two bad moms each real quick fun light okay round. Worst yeah, moms. So worst mom. So I have to say Caillou's mom is just the worst. <laughs> I don't know what it is. First of all, she looks like a giant toddler. Like she dresses like a toddler. I know part of that's because the whole the whole show is primary colors. Yeah. I'm not even sure there's anything besides like. I think you're right. Red, yellow and blue in that entire show. And if yeah. there is like you don't even notice it. So she dresses like a toddler, but she's shaped like a toddler. Something about her. Her <laughs> hair is toddlerish. Something about her is just off to me. And then um, she's just I feel like she kind of hates Caillou. <laughs> I feel like every time Caillou don't you kind of hate Caillou well of course I do so I get it but it's like none of the adults want Caillou around she always seems like she's just really irritated with Caillou yeah Um, or so I don't know I just every time that show Caillou's bad enough but then add in like the mom and I just can't stand it I have to not watch it yeah (laughs) that's a pretty good one Um, okay well I have two of the worst moms from two of my favorite shows of all time and the first is Betty Draper from Mad Men Um, especially like the first four seasons Um, but she's so bad it's fun to watch she's so bad so there's a great video mashup that I watch like every time well every season that Mad Men would come back I would watch it and share it and I will link it up in the show notes and it's a mashup of like Betty Draper's Guide to Parenting basically and it's all her saying Bobby stop it go upstairs <laughs> Sally, Bobby, turn off the TV. <laughs> and she's smoking and having a she's martini so or whatever. Bad. She's so bad. Yes. Um, so that's just glorious. Um, but and she also, never gets better. No, no, no. She's <laughs> she just terrible. gets weirder. She just, yeah. yeah, it gets real weird. And then, yeah. <laughs> um, and then the other one from our favorite, Veep, Julia Louis-Dreyfus's character, Selena Meyer oh, on Veep, is possibly the goodness. worst mother in the history she's of mothers. She's terrible. I mean, terrible. it's supposed to be funny and it is funny. But, but it cr- it's, it's cringy. So, it's so bad it's cringy like you almost just want her even though you know it's funny and it's tongue-in-cheek you just want her to be nice to Catherine sometimes and she's so bad and she'll she'll kind of seem like she's about to and then it it's always like it doesn't last or she did it for the wrong reason right it's always it's always for her own personal and political gain yeah and Catherine is like the biggest disappointment and annoyance to her and the actress who plays Catherine is Kiefer Sutherland's daughter and yeah and she is great. And yes, she yeah. is great. I mean, that is like one of my favorite shows. Yeah. And well, and I guess to round that out, one that I thought that I forgot to mention before was um, the mom from Arrested Development. Yeah. And the great thing about her is that she's terrible. <laughs> she's so bad. Lucille. But you don't even care because everyone else is terrible. And the whole, yes. <laughs> so everyone's terrible. So it's like, whatever. She's, you know, like the daughter and her have this terrible relationship. Yeah. But, but, uh, what's it, Lindsay? But yeah. Lindsay's awful. So yeah. it's like everyone They're all- is just. They're, they're all terrible people. They are all terrible people. Do you know, I don't know who that actress is. And she's got to be famous because... Oh, she is. She is. And of course, I can't I just it, don't but. know what else she's been in, but she's amazingly terrible. A horrible <laughs> Ooh, on purpose. Bless me. Goodness gracious. I'm having like problems with my sneezes and stuff today. But um, I'm looking it up right now because I have... Okay. It's, it's, it's a famous name. And when I say it... Um, oh, my goodness. Why can't... Why is it not coming up? That's Jessica right. Walter. She's oh, just, yes. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Yes. She's been around a long time and she's so funny. And that wink. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She's evil. (laughs) Like evil, but just, yeah, it's a great show. So we end it. So we ended on very um, bad moms, bad moms on purpose, like moms that we love to hate, um, which is probably more of the TV that you and I watch, honestly, is that snarky stuff. But um, this was really fun, you guys. I want to remind our listeners of a couple things. Everything we talked about, especially all the books that you're going to want to go order, if you choose, um, are, will be in the show notes at themomhour.com. This is episode 118. Um, and go get Epic. Get Epic.com. Um, promo code MOMHOUR. 
um, and that will get you two free months of Epic, which has over 25,000 high quality, popular children's books. And your kids can surf around, search around, browse around without mm. you worrying about what they're getting into. It's one of my favorite features. Um, and then, yeah, stick around because Allegra and I are doing just a little segment on some of the books and characters that she is into lately. So that will be fun. Very, very fun. And we'll uh, talk to you guys soon. We'll be back next week. Bye, guys. Hey, guys. I'm back here with Allegra, who's my nine-year-old daughter. Hi, Allegra. Hi, Mommy. So, Allegra wanted to come on and talk a little bit about some of her favorite mom characters from books and movies and TV. So, she's thought about this. So, Allegra, who's first? Which is your favorite mom from a book? The Wrinkle in Time mom is really nice. Okay, so I have to confess I didn't read Wrinkle in Time when I was a kid. What do you like about the mom from Wrinkle in Time? She's really smart and she she takes care of her kids well and is very open to Meg's friends and encouraging. Oh, I love those things. She sounds awesome. So your teacher's reading you Wrinkle in Time out yes. loud, right? In fourth grade, which I love. Um, I know it's a really popular book. I just never got into it. So, okay, do you have one from a movie in mind? Yes, the mom from Beethoven. Okay, so we watched Beethoven. Beethoven is, I don't know, 25 years old or so. So our listeners probably watched it when they were kids. Um, so we just watched it with you guys kind of recently, and it's funny, right? Yes. Yeah. So what do you like? That mom is played by an actress named Bonnie Hunt, who's very funny. What do you like about her in the movie? Um, she's funny mm-hmm. and nice and... She says sorry when she does things wrong. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, they have quite a challenge with that yes. big dog. And the dad is kind of stressed out. Yes. I remember that about it. Uh-huh. Okay, it's and then you picked one from TV that surprised me. So why don't you tell tell everybody which one you picked from TV? From TV, I picked Lloyd's mom from the Lego Ninjago TV show. Okay, so the Lego Ninjago is a TV series. Do we get it on Netflix? Yeah. Where do we get it? I so think it's, on it's one of those TV series created about the Lego characters from Ninjago, which I have to say, I would not have thought that there would even be a mom in there. But you think she's a good mom? Yes. And it's Lloyd's mom? Yes, Lloyd's mom. He's the chosen green special ninja okay and he's got a good mom who knew um so let's talk a little bit about epic you have been using the epic app and they are our sponsor for this episode are you enjoying that yeah yeah what do you like about epic they have a lot of good history books but also story books and i like their information ones i read one about alexander hamilton who's my favorite founding father and And they told me information that I didn't know about him. Yeah, from any of the other books that you've gotten that you found out. I've read a Um, lot of Hamilton books. Yeah, you have read a lot of Hamilton books. Um, It was great when you came home and needed to do some research for homework the other day. And you were able to just fire up Epic and search around. And we didn't have to worry about... About robots. Yeah, about robots. Um, And, oh, we used it when we were on vacation in Denver recently. Oh, yeah. Do you remember? What Mm -hmm. did you look up? I looked up... It was your favorite, Ivy and Bean? Oh, yes. So there's a there's a book series yeah. called Ivy and Bean, and there's one that's Allegra's favorite, and we don't have it at home. It's and the only one we don't have. Yeah, and there we had it, right, in Epic. So um, our listeners get two free months of Epic. Do you think oh, they should yes. check that out? I do, because yeah. it's free. All right. Well, Allegra, thanks for being here. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like Chatbooks. Chatbooks makes it beyond easy to create beautiful photo books by importing your digital photos from anywhere, Instagram, Facebook, Google Photos, or directly from your phone. The books come in a variety of sizes with beautiful cover options and binding styles to choose from, and they start at just $15. Plus, we have a great deal just for our listeners. Use code THEMOMHOUR20 to save 20% off your purchase. Just download the Chatbooks app and use code THEMOMHOUR20 to save 20%. Hi, everyone. Megan here. Sarah and I would absolutely love it if you would hit pause right now, like right where you're listening, and leave the Mom Hour a rating and review. If our show has helped you feel a little more confident as a mom or a little less alone, this is one of the biggest ways you can thank us, and it really only takes about 30 seconds. 
If you're listening to Apple Podcasts, you can navigate to the Mom Hours show listing. So when you're in the episode you're listening to right now, click where it says the Mom Hour just above the play button and then scroll all the way to the bottom and you will see the ratings and reviews. We would love if you would leave us one as well. Thank you so much for listening.